want to do a downward facing dog, but you're somewhere where you can't put your hands on the floor because, you know, it's just not a floor you want to put your hands on. Or maybe there's other reasons that you don't want to tip down like that. And, but you really want to feel that stretch in your back. There, it's a modification to it that you can totally do anywhere that you feel comfortable doing. Find yourself a surface. I'm going to use this, so I'm going to drop a little low, but you can find one that's a little higher, wherever that's going to work comfortable for you. Play around. Pop your hands onto that surface. Get them nice and firm. Lucky me, I happen to have an old yoga mat on top of my table here. Reuse your yoga mats, man. Find uses for them. It's very fun when you wear, finally wear one out. Now you will note that I'm walking my feet backwards as I'm finding the, some length in my back, my arms. Oh, my legs, they're so tense. So let's bring them in a little bit. Let's soften those knees a little bit. Something we forget about downward facing dog is that it's in the back. We don't need straight legs. We can have bent knees. We can have soft knees. Oh, that feels nice. I'm gonna walk back a little bit, find a little more length in my back, remember to soften my knees, feel my mat shift, and go, oh, readjust. There we go. All right, take a breath here. And another. I think I have a third one in me. Now when I go to come out of this, I'm going to walk my feet up. I'm going to slowly raise myself up. I'm going to treat it just like I was in the actual downward dog where my hands are on the floor. Push up on my fingers. Adjust my shirt. Oh, I found fidget pose. And yeah, downward facing dog using any surface, like I said. I used a lower one. You might want to use one that's a little higher. That's okay. Just find the length, find your space. You do you.